Uh, I value your time, so I'll try to make this under a half hour. Maybe I did do a run through this this set this morning with the net. It was we capped it about an hour and a half, so I'll, I'll condense it down for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> half hour. I'll try my best. Okay. So thanks for coming. Uh, our BB Jaguars activities meeting. So I'm uh, I'm Chris Anderson, uh, activities director. Uh, what I'd like to do is we're going to go through our philosophy, uh, our five keys for a positive experience, some handbook, some highlights in the handbook, and the handbook's going to be uh, attached on the website. So if you want to go more in depth, you can on that website, and then we're to find more information, and then at the end, the fall activity sports will have their own little kickoffs, uh, parent meetings at different locations, and we'll talk about that. So like I said, I'm Chris Anderson. This is my 17th year in education, coaching. So that's uh, it's a long time. It goes really fast. I've enjoyed it. Uh, dean of students as well, and I'm also teaching a, a phi a class. Uh, most of you probably know my wife, Christina, school counselor here. I don't know if she's in the room. And then we have two little girls. Uh, Kendall's four years old, and Charlie, our youngest, is 14 months. So, just start a walk. Uh, coaches, we have we have a handful of coaches here today. Uh, what I'd like you to do real quick is just stand up. You can say what activity you're involved with, and that's that's basically it. Hard, pretty harmful. Coach Goodwin's in the front row. We'll, we'll uh, second row. Matt Goodwin, golf. Katie Boyd, dance. Christy Schaefer, track and field. Greenwood, softball. Katie okay. Anna, tennis. Emily Stack, writer, speech. Alana Hunter, volleyball. I get club hockey, volleyball. Brittany Borgadang, volleyball and basketball. Ben Quap, hockey, football and baseball. Uh, Bryce Bergeron, wrestling. Chris Macho, football, baseball. Eric Schumann, Logan Funk, softball. Boys Fisher, softball. You're supposed to stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Hey, can you just give a little round of applause? <laughs> we value you, I value you, and, and I really, really appreciate what you do. Can everybody back there hear me? Can you hear me up there? All right, good. Okay, so our philosophy, what we're all about, is our goal is to develop, develop better habits and attitudes in students, help shape them into positive adults. There are many life lessons that uh, these students learn along the way in, in education and then also in sports uh, and activities. They are students first. I know sometimes we forget that, and as coaches we forget that, but they are students first, and then they're athletes. And my goal as an AD is to keep our athletics and activities as enjoyable as, as possible. A positive experience where everyone feels welcome, and we want all of our students to be involved in something. And uh, we're too small of a school to be specializing in one activity or one sport. We need to be involved in multiple. Okay, so please, if you have a friend out there that's thinking about joining something, tell them, tell them to join, tell them to give it a try, all right? Five P's for, uh, for positive experience, and this, this came from Greg Berge, who was the high school coach and principal at Lake City. Uh, if we as coaches, parents, and players can work together on the following items, we will be laying the groundwork and foundation for a positive experience. So number one is our team culture. This is, we all play an important role in developing this culture. Players, coaches, students, community members, parents, we're all in this together. So we want to cheer for all players, all players, not just your son or daughter, but cheer for everybody on that team. Continue to bring the positive energy, positive, and avoid the negative. Be a gatekeeper for that culture. So what that means, a gatekeeper, 
is protect. Protect what you stand up for, what you believe in. It's really easy when things aren't going your way to seek out the negatives. All right? To seek out those negatives. Protect the positive. Stay in that positive, that, that positive light, and you'll find your way through it. Okay? But if you go down that dark path of being negative, it's going to change everything that you believe in and everything you stand for. Okay? So be a gatekeeper of the culture. We, uh, right now, it's very tough to find youth coaches. It's very tough to find officials at all levels. When we have our traveling tournaments, it's really hard to find those officials. When we have high school sports and activities, it's very hard. Last year was my first year as an AD, okay? And that spring, and even the winter, there was a lot of cancellations rescheduling. There were many times that we had something scheduled that we could find here for a date, but the hardest thing to find was an official because there's just not many out there. Why do you think that is? They don't want to get yelled at. They don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So we need, to, we need to do a really good job here at BBE. We have great people. That's what I've learned, is to show those officials who we are. OK? Positive. Uh, one in three schools in Minnesota have a new AD, activities director, that's in their first or second year. Last year, I went to a new AD's conference in St. Cloud. There were over 50 in attendance. That was the most they ever had. Uh, so it's, it tells you something about activities and sports. And so again, be a positive gatekeeper of that culture. Second thing here, make sure that your child knows that your relationship is not based on playing time. That your relationship with them is not based on performance. That you should always support them and love them. And that that car ride home is a safe spot. I, I can reflect back to when I was a kid a uh, long time ago, but some of the t most difficult times for me was when I had to get in that car with my dad, who was one of my best friends. I love my dad. I mean, a lot of you know my dad. He's a little crazy. Um, but he is such a basketball junkie. And he, and he wanted the best for me. But that, those car rides were some of the most difficult because he has expectations for me. And so I have expectations for myself. Um, if I had a poor game, you know, it's hard as, an adult, as a parent to sit back and not say something and you probably don't mean it, but that, that your son or daughter is going to probably take it as you're not there for them. So make sure that you, you, you do the best you can with these, okay? Just like it says, many students are getting out of youth sports at a young age due to the fact that interactions with their parents are based on how they can do better, what they are doing wrong, end of the day, help create a positive experience for your child through encouragement, love, and support. So the experience, it's your child's experience, not your experience, okay? We've had our chances. We've had our opportunities. We want to be there to support them, okay? It's their experience. The process is the prize. Uh, when kids and players reflect back, what they're going to remember is not that they went to Holding Ford and won uh, a volleyball match three games to one. Okay? Not that they went to ACGC and won a, a baseball game 12 to 2. What they're going to remember is the bus ride there. They're going to remember the locker room. They're going to remember the dinners. They're going to remember uh, the little things behind the scene. Not so much the statistics. Okay? So please keep that in mind as an experience that makes up the process. Uh, there'll be times along the way where your, your child's going to struggle. You know? We all struggle. Coaches struggle, players struggle, uh, teachers struggle, we all do. But it's important to remind, remember that it's your child's struggle, not our struggle. Our job as adults is to uh, support them through the process. Be there for them. Don't be what they call here a snowball or a snowplow parent 
a parent that doesn't allow their child to face adversity. Adversity and failure will, will prepare them for life. Okay? We all fail. No matter what we do, we're all going to fail at some point. It's about what we do next. That makes it all up. Okay? <clears throat> they will find a way to navigate their problem to solve it and win it. Team individual athletics and activities are the ultimate lab for what we experience in life. It's our job as parents and coaches to help navigate this athlete to success and not, not do it for them. Be their support system. Okay. And if you have questions, you can ask at the end. Uh, so, number four. Uh, kids need to hear. They need to hear these following things. I believe in you. I love watching you play. Do your best. Be great at what you're good at. Love your teammates. Next play or move on. Make memories. Pass the mere test. All right? So looking at yourself, are you being positive in the mirror? Okay? Lead by example and lead out loud. And then finally, the fifth one is enjoy it. This, I know you and kids, you guys hear this all the time from your parents, your coaches, your teachers. It goes fast. It goes extremely fast. Seniors, raise your hand. How many seniors do we have in here? Raise your hand. Okay, we've got a handful. Would you attest that it's gone really fast for you? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason, the older you get, the faster it goes. So your senior year is going to. Be done before you know it. And then you're off to college or whatever you're doing next. But enjoy it. Make, make those memories last. Any questions so far? All right. Uh, handbook. All right, again, this can be found on the school website. Uh, these are high school league violations or, or rules, just so we're all aware. Your first violation is <clears throat> you get to set out 14 calendar days or two consecutive games or contests, whatever is longer. Okay, that's the first one. So if you, you know, Minnesota high school league violation, you need alcohol, tobacco, uh, things like that. Second is you lose eligibility in that sport for the next six consecutive contests or three weeks, 21 calendar days, or whichever is greater. And your third one, which you shouldn't go down that road, uh, students lose eligibility in that sport for 12 consecutive contests, or four weeks, 28 calendar days, whichever is greater. And if a student receives a violation, they have to complete that activity, that season, they can't quit after they serve their 14 calendar days. You can't quit and then go on to your next one. You have to continue through that season, complete that season, and then start your next season activity. Okay? So you have to serve your violation and finish the season. Any questions there? In our handbook, it goes deeper in length. Uh, some respect issues. Uh, it's always a two-way street, okay? So chain of command. If, if, if you are a player and you have a question about things, or a parent, you have a question with your coach, uh, player and coach have a sit-down discussion. So we want to always entice and, and, and value those, those life skills. So hopefully that player and the coach can sit down, discuss what's going on, all right? Step two then is parent and player and coach have a meeting. And please schedule this in advance. Don't just show up, all right? So please communicate with the coach, set up a time, a date, and then go from there. The last, the last phase is parent, player, and ADP, all right? So a uh, little bit of things there. It all is, is uh, handled through communication. 24-hour uh, policy. What this means is, just basically at the end of a contest or an event or a game, emotions are high, especially if things don't go well. And they're not just high for you, they're probably negative for your son or daughter, and they're probably negative for that coaching staff. So please take time, step away, think about where you're at, 
reflect on it, and then go from there. Yeah. Uh, kids, students, uh, athletes, attendance is, is, is mandatory. Attendance. Tardies. So detention, getting to class on time. That's, that's a skill, all right? Uh, behavior at school. And then not only school, but in the community. So what you do outside of school also is a reflection on you, your team, your parents. Uh, so please think about what you're doing before you do it. My mom always told me, if you have to think twice about it, probably not a good decision. Uh, chemical use, we kind of talked about that a little bit, but alcohol and vaping, any Minnesota State High School League violation is, is a loss of awards for that individual. So meaning all conference, all state, uh, being a captain, okay, those, those are all gone if you, if you have a Minnesota State High School League violation for that current year. Academics, we're student athletes first, we talked about that. Eligibility checks, we will have those. Uh, plagiarism, second offense, the second offense is a Minnesota State High School League violation. And <clears throat> social media, this is a big one. Social, me social media can serve, come, come down as a high school league violation as well. Uh, so not, not just players, but also <coughs> parents. We need to be aware of what we're doing on social media. It is so easy, it's so easy, especially in those stressful times or in those times you don't agree, to go into social media and start bashing coaches, bashing teachers, bashing even former player or, or current teammates. That stuff goes all over the place. So please be aware before you hit the send button, of what you're putting out there. Many of these things can get resolved if we just talk, if we just communicate with one another, rather than going on a platform like TikTok, or can you go on TikTok? I don't know TikTok very well. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, things like that. Okay, so parents, players, athletes, please be kind. Uh, easy. This is this is one where you may not even realize you're doing it. Uh, the definition is the imp imposition of strenuous, often humiliating initiation. And this is in the high school league handbook as well. And there have been schools that have been dinged with high school league uh, more than violations. Their seasons have been canceled because of uh, hazing. Okay. So we need to just, it comes down again to that respect. We gotta treat each other with respect. You may not even realize, because you think you guys you think it's a joke, you and your teammates, of what you're doing to somebody else, but that somebody else has feelings. So let's not cross that boundary line. Good? Questions at all? Hey, we're all this together. Uh, so we respect our facilities, our locker rooms, our gyms, classrooms, fields, uniforms, buses, take care of everything you get. Uh, we have, I know there's someone out there that, another school that always has better things, but I think we have some nice facilities here. So we need to take care of them. Other sports, so if, uh, if you're in AU, JO, volleyball, if you're in a, another, some kind of league during your season. So if you're in a season and you choose to, to play, you know, AU or, or whatever's listed, that season you're in takes priority over those other things, okay? Uh, sometimes it's, you know, when you jump into another league and you're in a season already, you're, you're making a choice to put more on your plate, but uh, you should be there for your school, okay? You're, you're, this, the season you've signed up for, uh, for your school. Playing two sports at a time. Uh, <clears throat> great example of this was uh, Tate DeCook last year. He played basketball, uh, baseball and he, he did golf. All right? And he, the, 
the same season, and you can do those. It's a little bit more work. It's a lot more work. Uh, and that's all set up for your coaches, so you just got to communicate with your coaches. But the student and the parents will have to sign a form to pick their primary sport. Because Tate last year, great problem to have. He went to state in golf, and he went to state in baseball. And um, he, he had a primary sport in baseball, and he, he, he went to baseball. But sometimes those decisions can get tough. You know, that's why you have to pick the primary sport, and that way your parent, you, or the athlete uh, are signing up. There's every coaches are involved, and they everyone's aware of what you're doing. Your primary uh, cheering sections. You know, we we want to. I know emotions get high in games, and I was there once too. Believe it or not, um, it's so easy to start pointing out that opponent. You know, pointing out, targeting that opponent for ooh, they're you know not performing well or whatever. But they have parents, they have teammates, they have feelings. So please, please be respectful. Uh, cheer for your team, not against your opponent. I know you've heard that before, it probably goes in and out of your ears, but uh, please do that. Uh, Heartland Orthopedics will continue giving, uh, providing care for us. So if you're, uh, if you're an athlete and you get injured, you know, they will be helping you out. And it's Christy. Is Christy here? She's here. There she is. Christy uh, came to uh, say that we're very lucky to have her second year. And uh, she's, she's here just to say a few words. Um, well, I'm Christy. Like I said, this is my second year here at PE. Really enjoying the first year here. Um, I think we're going to smell that. It's kind of a quick turnaround. Um, but just kind of a few things. Um, here to provide any support if anyone has injuries, questions, um, you know, like wound care during practice or games. I am available here during the week, two days, typically Monday through Wednesday, although it may vary based on my um, clinic schedule. And then typically I am here for all the home events as well. Um, I do travel with football, so it's kind of like a real different thing. Um, so just kind of a few other little things. Um, I do ask that if you or your child sees a doctor, do you just please bring me a doctor note, um, or even Chris or front office um, coaches. That way we can all, we're all kind of on the same page and communicating effectively. Um, the other big thing this year is that Heartland is transitioning from impact testing for concussions to sway testing. And the biggest thing for this is that Spray testing incorporates a balance aspect and it can also be done on the phone, which is all way more convenient than on the laptop. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Chris has my contact information. Coaches have my contact information as well. Um, and then if you need help with um, scheduling appointments, I'm happy to assist with that as well. Give a little round of applause. There. We're getting there, so thanks for your patience. Uh, fall, fall athletes, so before Monday, please make sure you have signed off on the Minnesota State High School League brochure, our activity handbook. You have paid your activity fee, you have completed your physical, and this school has an updated uh, copy and file. If you have any questions, you can contact myself, you can email Annette. Uh, Online registration fees and physicals do the 14th, okay? Typically, I know COVID was, was kind of changed the course a little bit, but typically uh, we, we, we suggest that kids get their physicals in 7th and 10th grade. It's a three-year cycle, um, so they just 7th and 10th grade. Shuttle buses, they're going to begin August 29th, first day of school. Uh, cameras in all buses. And so for non-school days, Okay, not school days, there's no shuttle buses. There will not be a bus for athletes unless there's a game or a contest. That's for non school days. If we have a game or a contest, we will get a, obviously get you a bus. School days, we have, we have one shuttle bus, it runs Tuesday through Friday. Uh, 5.30 pickup at the elementary, 5.45 drop off 
at the high school, okay? And then they, they leave from here to go to El Rosa for a six o'clock drop off. And then if a student needs to get back to Bruton, there's a 615 drop off. Okay, I know it's a little bit confusing. Okay, questions there? Okay, how to find out more information? Our website, uh, through activities there. You can go to our Central Minnesota conference page. It's pretty neat. And what I'd like you to do, there's one piece of homework you're going to get. Okay? Everyone, students and parents, please download the Our School app. What that looks like, and I don't get paid by them, but what it looks like is a blue hat. It's a blue hat. It updates automatically for you. So if you ever have a question, uh, when they reschedule this, because I know sometimes our, our, our kids forget to tell us things, this will tell you everything you need to know. And I've made the mistake numerous times by not refreshing it. I've had a call on that many times to say, did we make this change? There were so many changes getting made last year. What you need to do is pull down your screen and it will reload and it will make those changes automatically. If you don't pull down your screen, at least last year, it will not make those changes automatically. Okay? Our school app. Please, please, please get that. We're going to watch a quick, well, it's a six minute video. I know it seems long. It's really neat. Done by the Minnesota State High School League. You're going to see two of our student athletes in this video uh, from last year. Maybe you've seen it already. I'm a teacher just like you. I teach sixth grade science. And if you're anything like me, you've wasted your playing time trying to find. It's all about sportsmanship. Coaches coach, officials officiate, our players play, and our fans cheer. That is the partnership that we're looking forward to. It's all around safety, it's all around sportsmanship, and it's all around having a great time in our facilities. The Minnesota State High School League is a dynamic partnership of more than 600 schools reaching all communities and corners of the state. Our mission is to provide educational opportunities in fine arts and athletics for all students. Everything we do is focused on supporting, growing, and improving our students' experiences through activities. As we move into a new school year, our ongoing work is focused on three main efforts. Our top priority is to promote and support safe, respectful, and inclusive environments for participation and competition. We want all of our high schools to provide activities and events that are free from discrimination, harassment, and marginalization. That's why the Minnesota State High School League recently led a collaborative effort of seven educational organizations across the state. Together We Make a Difference was designed to amplify the voices and advance the vision of our students to ensure respectful and safe schools and environments. After attending the conference, I really hope that as a small school, we're more inclusive and we include everybody and that everybody gets to be involved in finding what they enjoy. The code of conduct was basically treating everybody with respect, the same respect you want to receive. Being kind, not like being rude to somebody because they're not from the same background as you, like ethnics, religion, being inclusive. It's important to feel safe because within that you're able to perform the way you want to and you're able to give the results you want to. In my personal opinion, when I'm not comfortable, I'm not giving all I can. Playing in an environment where like you feel comfortable, you feel safe, you're going to be playing at your best because you don't have to worry about other distractions. It takes a team of dedicated adults to provide the kind of programming our students deserve. That's why we're focused on recruiting, retaining, and supporting our coaches, officials, and administrators. As an education-based activities director, there's nobody more important than the coach or advisor for our students, whether it's in the fine arts or athletics, because we know that each child is one caring adult away from changing their path of their life. If you look at or listen to any successful person talk about how they got there, they never did it alone. There's always a mentor, 
And so we need those types of leaders in our schools today to help our young people understand what it means to be a strong, supportive person within their community. I'm very appreciative for the people. The people that I work with, the camaraderie with them is the thing that makes it enjoyable. There are coaches that make it enjoyable. There are students that make it enjoyable. We're somebody to help make the game better. We're, we're there to make the athletic contest better. We're always looking for new officials. I think just from gaining awareness and visibility on the role of officiating and how important it is. So definitely I encourage anybody that is interested in officiating to reach out and we have a lot of resources and a team to help out. Sometimes the most enduring lessons our students learn happen through activities beyond the classroom. So it's our goal to focus on enhancing the education of students through a broad range of opportunities that extend the traditional curriculum. When alumni come and talk to me, the one thing I always hear is, you know, they remember those big moments, but they also remember what led up to them. Everything that they've done to prepare and how those coaches and those experiences have helped prepare them. These events and experiences will stay with our students for their entire life. The relationships that they build in these extracurricular arts and athletic activities the competition, the sportsmanship that they learn, all of these things will help them be successful citizens, help them be successful employees, business owners, and just positive contributing members to society. At the Minnesota State High School League, it's about more than membership, it's about partnership. Because when our member schools commit to common principles and expectations, we all share the responsibility to provide safe, respectful, and inclusive activities for all of our students. To do our best for student athletes and participants, we need to be good partners to one another and collaborate with other schools and the Minnesota State High School League. As school districts, we know our students best. We know our families and communities and caregivers best. And to partner with the State High School League is really to work collectively to make sure that everyone participating in these wonderful events has a safe, welcoming environment where they can thrive and, and be successful. I'm just super excited about where we are and also where we can go and continue to have these conversations to provide great high school experiences for kids. Nothing is more important than the well-being of our students, and participation in activities is a great way to enhance our students' overall health. I think it's really, really important that every high school student find something to be involved in. Finding some way to get involved in your school and in your community is so important. It not only positively benefits your mental health, but helps you improve as a person, helps you grow, helps you make connections with other people. These activities have helped shape who I am because it makes me understand the importance of being in something and it has helped me for the future because these activities help you gain skills such as time management and communication. Giving students these valuable opportunities is the mission of the Minnesota State High School League. And looking around the state this year, we've seen high participation numbers, packed venues, and enthusiastic support from school communities. And together, we have a bright future ahead. On behalf of the Minnesota State High School League, I want to thank everyone in all of our member schools for your continued active support. Because it's about more than membership, it's about partnership. How to open your car door when you're trapped underwater. <laughs> A lethal design flaw. Important too. Life skill. <laughs> All right. We're gonna we're gonna wrap things up here. Uh, man, I got a lot guys. Uh, breakout sessions here. So football, you guys are staying in here. Uh, volleyball, you're gonna go to the middle school area. Middle school area. Okay, Dennis. One on the courts. Conditioning test right away. Okay. And then I'll take cross country in the media or in the cafeteria. I really appreciate you coming tonight. I know I went over a little bit more than a half hour. Thank you for being patient. Have a great season. Hold up, hold up. Sorry, one more thing. Those meal forms Oh, the meal forms. If you took a meal form, it's um, it's not correct. So we will get you new ones. Sorry, thank you. All right, okay.